Welcome everyone, my name is Echo, and in today's Minecraft video, we have just been given a huge update for Minecraft Pocket Edition, the Bedrock version. This is the Minecraft version 1.19.50. This update is rolling out right now for Minecraft on iOS, Android, Windows, Xbox, Switch, and PlayStation. But be patient, it can take up to 24 hours reach your platform here is the confirmation from jay wells mega spud our community manager he said check out the change log for minecraft 1.19.50 if you want the change log it is down below this is one of the biggest updates in the game's history and we are going to go through every single feature that has changed strap in there's a lot to go through starting with new features ladies and gentlemen boys and girls spectator mode is complete it also says spectator mode now appears on the list of personal game modes in settings. There are tons of changes with spectator mode. Instead of me putting them all on signs, they are located in the official change log. But I will go over the basic information that you need to know about spectator mode. So fun fact, spectator mode for Minecraft Bedrock Edition has been in development for seven months. As of today, it has officially released. I have my fingers crossed that the end goal for spectator mode is going to be hardcore mode for Minecraft Bedrock Edition. If you now go into settings on the right hand side where it says personal game mode, default survival, creative adventure and spectator mode. It's not available in default game mode, but it is available in the personal one or you can type in the specific command which is forward slash game mode and you just type in spectator and then you become this floaty head and then you can see through the world under the world into the world this is a very big and special day for bedrock players alongside not having the hardcore game mode you can't tap on mobs and become that mobs like you can on minecraft java edition whether that's going to be added i don't know also mobile players as of today the new touch controls have been added and it does say new touch controls are now enabled on touch by default and when you load into minecraft 1.19.50 and you go to play a world create new world you will be faced with this which basically tells you that you now have to pick between three of the options players can now choose between joystick and tap to interact joystick and aim crosshair or d-pad and tap to interact there is still no customizable controls for touch players and i don't think players are going to be happy until that is introduced as of today as well new default skins to access these go into dressing room go to a free new slot click create character and click on this button here we do have alex and we do have steve well along with alex we also have nor ari sunny mckenna fa dory kai and the goats minecraft steve Surprise, surprise, the Vex has been updated. The changelog states, updated the model and texture of the Vex. The Vex retains a slightly larger hitbox to make it easier to fight. We're expecting these in 1.20. In fact, there's a bunch of 1.20 features in this version. So the Vex has changed. The law behind this is that the Vex is... I don't know, an evil version of the LA. They look very, very similar. Now, these things are slightly bigger. And to be honest with you, I think they fit perfectly. This guy is going straight towards the Iron Golem right there. We're going to forward slash game mode S. And we summon this guy. They do have a slightly different texture when they're angry towards the player. But I really like this chain. So yeah, whenever you go to a Woodland Mansion now, or you're fighting a raid... They're going to be different. Minecraft, Java, and Bedrock vanilla parity changes. Starting with mobs. While playing tag, baby villagers will now run at a quicker speed that matches Java edition. Moving on to blocks. Wooden doors, iron doors, wooden trap doors, iron trap doors, and fence gates now use the same opening and closing sound effects as java edition and i'm just going to go a little bit further here because also added unique button click sound 
but wooden buttons to match job for edition so all of these the sound changes they now match job for edition They also updated pressure plates to have different pitches based on their behavior to match Java Edition. So listen carefully. Crimson and Warped Block sets now have a unique set of sounds. So listen to these. Chiseled and cut red sandstone now have smooth undersides. We have our first bug report. Chiseled and smooth red sandstone do not have smooth undersides. Reported back in 2017. Been a part of all these versions. And there is the comparison of Java and Bedrock Edition. And you will see that they are now a lot smoother. Matching Minecraft Java Edition. Finally, projectiles landing on mud will no longer shake repeatedly. We have a bug report. Super annoying. Been reported for quite some time. If we watch this video when they throw a trident or a bow on mud, it freaks out and it's super annoying. It's been fixed today. And just to show you as an example, trident plus mud, nothing happens. Bow plus mud. Nothing happens. Amphibious mobs no longer have trouble pathfinding around mud blocks. We have a bug report. Fish, frogs, tadpoles spin in a circle when they're on mud blocks. So that's what they looked like. They were really, really dizzy, but it's been fixed today. So we'll use these as an example. A big salmon. They can swim in there happily now. Oh, oh, sorry. Without any problems. Same with frogs, same with tadpoles. Although, they do spin a little bit, but they're no longer as confused as before. Mud and soul sand block bounding boxes now matches their visual bounding boxes when a player places the blocks. Lily pads now pop with sound and particles when run into by a boat. So if we put this in here, get in this, listen to this. Most blocks destroyed from lack of support, now have visual particles, audio effects, and cause vibrations. So that's just general breaking of like any block or any item at all. Coral fans can no longer be placed on the side of slab blocks. Coral fans can now survive on the top of solid transparent blocks like glass. I did show you this not long ago. You have glass, you place it down, you can now put the coral on top of them. They're not in water, so eventually they will die, but they can be placed on top. Fixed a bug where placed light blocks were invisible even while selecting a light block. So this bug here is if you place this down, let's say you set it to the highest level, which is 15. You went off it, you went back on the light block, this block would then be visible, as you can see. That's no longer the case. Important, so listen up. Experimental features. Introducing the next major update experimental toggle. Enable the next major update toggle in the world settings to enable this content. Once you're in the create new world screen, you want to scroll down to experiments, gameplay. This is what they're talking about. Turn this on. Previously with spectator mode, it's no longer spectator mode. It's actually referring to 1.20. If you want to test those features, make sure you have this turned on. It does say, though, that these features are a work in progress and are still in active development. The design and functionality of these features will likely change before they are released. Please remember, worlds that have used experimental toggle will always be flagged as experimental. We recommend keeping these experimental worlds 
as separate copies from your main saves. Moving on to Bamboo Wood Block. It says, added the bamboo family of blocks as a wood type and use for bamboo. Added bamboo raft. So let me teach you about these because they work slightly different than in 1.20. So we got a forward slash game mode survival here. If you don't already have an active bamboo farm, now is the time to get one. So there is a couple of blocks missing and the recipes are slightly different. Instead of the recipe being this is where you start to get a bamboo block. It all starts at this current moment in this version like this. Then that will make bamboo planks. Now using the planks, if you make slabs, you can make the mosaic block using two bamboo like this. And you can make stairs, you can make doors, you can make all kinds of blocks. If you go in the creator menu and you just type in like bamboo, for example, that's available. But it is missing the so-called log variation. You could probably hear them in the background, but camels are here. Added camels which can spawn in desert villages. Two players can ride camels together. Camels are tall animals and riders are high enough off the ground out of range from mob melee attacks. Camels can walk and sprint or dash with a short burst of speed. Camels randomly sit down for short periods of time and flick their ears about. So they're pretty awesome. This is what the spawn egg looks like. They will just randomly sit down on their own when they're tired. They do have flappy ears. We just grab ourselves a saddle here. They can be ridden by one or two players. So I can get on this and I can do this. And if we take it off this, one thing that we don't currently have at this moment in time is camels can't get over uh, walls, which they can in the betas, previews, and snapshots. They can dash over them, which is pretty cool. They can sprint. They can dash over holes. They can dash over water. I think they're a pretty cool mob introduced. But they need a little bit more work. Wasn't mentioned in the change log, but you can breed them using a cactus to get a baby one. Also added was chiseled bookshelf. A new chiseled variation of the bookshelf. Can store books, book and quills, and enchanted books. Holds up to six books. Keeps the stories and lore of your world safe. Comparators can detect the last book placed slash removed. Perfect for hiding secrets in your spooky library. So again, crafting recipe for this. You need six, any kind of plank. And three, any kind of slab. Three on the top, three on the bottom. And then three in the middle equals the chiseled version. And the two eyes in the bookshelf. People said it looks like Kirby. So it can hold a whole range of books, including the book and quill enchanted and regular. That's regular. Now, currently, you can't direct the place you're placing them, but they're really awesome. Enchanted books. Again, it is also active with redstone, so you can make secret doors. And you can take them out as well and place them all in. Now, one thing to be mentioned currently is they do not currently work with the Minecraft hopper. So if we break this, place this put the hopper down and try and put the books inside of here. They don't automatically go in here, which again is available in testing. Hanging signs. A new type of sign that can be placed beneath and on the side of blocks. Hanging signs are available for all wood types. Hanging signs can also be placed under narrow blocks with center support like fences. So one thing to be mentioned here the only recipe that's available right now for these is the bamboo version. So this is done with two chains and six of the planks. And then like they said, it can be placed underneath here. And they can be directionally placed as well. So we can do this here. Which is pretty cool. They can be placed on the side like that. They're, they can be placed. Is it this way? This way? Ah, okay. So if we were to crouch that one, that's like a V-shaped one. There's another one. I believe that is available. Well, anyway, when it comes to crafting, I was like, why do these ones not work? So I was like, bam, bam. And I tried the acacia. That didn't work. I tried the oak. That also doesn't work. I get rid of all of these and we type in hanging. All of them are available, but they're just available inside of the creative, which really sucks. But anyway, hanging signs 
They're here. Oh, wait. There's a block version as well. Yes. That's what I need to show you. There's a block version. That's what it looks like under a block. That's what it's like on the side. And that's what it's like on a fence or when you crouch. There is a lot of fixes, starting with stability and performance. Everybody's favorite fix several crashes that could occur during gameplay. So, you know, when you're playing Minecraft and the game closes and you're like, wait, what? Why? Yes. That's what that focus is on. Fixed a crash that could occur when navigating down in the villager screen with the keyboard. Fixed an issue where game would crash when Ender Dragon Breath Attack hadn't hit blocks or fell into the void. Navigating through the recipe book when the player had an item that contained mobs in their inventory, like bees in beehives. No longer causes significant drops in performance. Really hoping there's bees in here. There is because it dropped off. And there, and there. So anyway, if you were having these and you try to just move around here, same like this, it would cause significant lag. The same problem's been an ongoing issue with shulker boxes. Fixed frame rate dropping when hovering over item slots on their creative inventory screen, we have a bug report. I've showed you this one a lot recently, but you'll see here that this uses FPS here. Bounces from 60 to 50 to 40, all the way up and all the way down. Just when doing this in the creative menus. Fixed a crash that would occur if education edition items were rendered without the education edition toggle turned on. Fixed a crash that could occur when actors with a non-playable owner went through end portals. Fixed a crash that could occur when loading into some marketplace worlds on low memory devices. Gameplay fixes. When stuck inside a block, players will now be pushed towards the nearest open area. So I'm gonna stand under here, and break all of these here and just show you that eventually, nope, it didn't work that time. It's meant to push you out. That, that, that didn't that didn't quite didn't quite happen for me. Uh, it's meant to push you to the nearest way out. I think it might well be full blocks. It might be well be if like a player is stuck inside of here. Do you know what I mean? But anyway, that's what it says. Uh, it's been fixed. Good news: maps corrupted by black pixels can now be repaired by revisiting corrupted areas. Previously affected maps can now be repaired by holding in main or offhand, you have a bug report. So if you had this problem where certain chunks of your map would just render completely black, that was like a moon, uh, you can fix it now. Grab yourself a map, have it either in your main hands, if that doesn't work, put it in your offhand, go to the previously affected chunks and it will work. Also fixed a bug that could cause the player to teleport back to a portal after exiting it. Fixed a bug that could cause players to get stuck on the building terrain screen when changing dimensions. We have a bug report. It's been a problem for quite some time, but if you try to go into a different dimension and you were stuck at this screen or you were stuck at this screen, it's been fixed. Fixed in proper level chunk blending when upgrading pre 1.18 worlds. We have a bug report. So for those of you who decided to not update your world just yet, you ended up with cut off chunks like this. So that has been fixed correctly as of today. Fixed Xbox controller, thumbstick, dead zone and sensitivity. We have a bug report. Xbox controller movement with increased dead zone on joystick. Again, there isn't a video to show you this, but if you had any sensitivity issues with an Xbox controller, it has been fixed. Moving on to mobs. Increased Enderman follow range from 32 to 64. So this is also a very interesting one. If I was, in fact, let's spawn two of these here. Now, for some reason on Bedrock Edition, let's say you hit this Enderman, right? You hit him once. He would then teleport away, right? In some cases, he would teleport away to 32 blocks and he would never come back. So you would only attack him once. And that was it. So basically, Enderman in this version have been given a pretty big buff. Low falling now consistently affects mobs ridden by players. Fixed an issue. Jump boost now consistently affects mobs ridden by players. The same for slow falling. Fixed an issue where breeding mobs 
with applied effects would result in the offspring having the effect bonuses permanently applied. Say goodbye to the super speed horses. We have a bug report. I don't know who was crazy enough to report this, but we did get to enjoy this for like two years. Again, if you wanted to replicate this, if you gave two horses the specific super speed, you bred them, the baby would have permanent super speed or permanent super jump. It's gone. Fixed bat resting location being offset when at negative world height. Armor stands now drop their offhand item upon destruction. Fixed a bug that caused the ender dragon to not load if the world was saved and loaded while it was alive. Moving on to blocks. Dirt path and farmland collision are now one pixel lower. So you'll see it here. If we look at this. Then we look at this, you can see it goes down. The exact same for farmland, so they're slightly indented. Same with the path here. And the collision box also indicates that as well. As well as players now sink in soul sand and mud blocks. Be very careful with this one. If I go to forward slash game mode S. If I crouch and I hover on a grass block, I don't catch fire, right? Because I'm technically one block above. Or a pixel above, right? So if we stand on this one, and then we try and do it then, you will catch fire. The same for a mud block as well. So if you are inside of the nether now, and you think standing on this, hovering over lava lakes is going to be okay now, it's not. Sugar cane will break on next random tick when its water source is removed. Piston arm now extends more smoothly, Blocks attached to pistons now more, move more slowly. But also, there is another one. Fixed blocks flickering when moved by pistons. So, quite a few fixes with pistons. The arm extension is a lot smoother here. It's not in, a, in, ex, in installments. They look a lot better. So, it's about time. Although, I do see like a slight visual bug there. But it's nothing too serious. It's about time they fix these though. Showed you this the other day. Huge fungus blocks will no longer replace partial blocks when growing from Nylium. Fixed an issue where an entity at coordinates 000 prevented pressure plates from being placed. Fixed an issue where signs would not play placement sound when placed. They do now. Bubble columns are now properly generated above underwater magma blocks. Swimming above mud blocks no longer causes the screen to get blocked. We have a bug report. Super annoying if you were in a mangrove. Basically, when you swam, you were basically inside of the block. That was fixed today. Moving on to items. Freshly crafted tools and armor now work the first time they are used. Weapons, tools, and armor can now be dropped from the player's inventory the first time after being renamed. Fixed issue with book and quill not able to be signed and closed. That's been a problem for a very long time. Fixed a bug where fully charged items were lost when going through a portal. That's referring to the likes of your trident, your crossbow, your bow. So they won't be stolen anymore. Using the anvil to enchant or fix items will no longer rename items unintentionally. Fixed a bug where slimes and magma cubes could break shields durability every tick. We have a bug report. Showed you this many, many times. But I'm going to show you one more time. So if you had a shield. Incredibly loud. But uh, yeah, that no longer happens. And I can confirm <laughs> that is no longer going to be the case. We just need to get ourselves a shield here. We have a shield. And we place this down. Change our game mode to survival. And these guys are right next to us. They're no longer going to keep just breaking this thing instantly. Same rule also applies, of course, to slimes and puffer fish were also a problem. Moving on to touch controls. Let's read the change log. Once again, a huge amount of touch control changes. We have gone over every single one of these in betas and previews. But if you do play with touch controls, I highly recommend taking the time to read the change log. There is a lot of changes fixes. One of the most important ones here is added toggle delayed block breaking which is creative only in touch settings to control this functionality basically it means that when 
your break place it placing and breaking blocks it's not just gonna do it by mistake which was super annoying it's a good change graphical applied ambient light to blocks moved by piston we have a bug report blocks appear brighter for a split second when moved by a piston in the dark there is a video here you can see a slight bit of light there set the time to midnight and we do it now you can see the block is not lighting up. Mob shadows now render properly on Android devices using certain GPUs. Added D3, D12 support for Intel integrated dedicated graphics for compatible drivers. Realms shortened text when uploading worlds and add-ons so it fits in the dialogue prompt. You will no longer get an error message when joining a realm that has been empty for several minutes user interface let's read the change log again i was running out of space in my world there has been a bunch of user interface changes we covered these in betas and previews if you're interested or intrigued the change log is below and technical updates let's read the change log once again a huge amount of changes for the technical side if you're interested in the technical side then refer to the change log they have updated the add-on files which now supports 1.19.50 for like, like I said, there was a lot of changes. So if you're a technical user, let me know what you're most excited about. I don't know if anybody made it this far, but if you did, thank you. You are the MVP. You're the GOAT. You're the king. Can we confuse people in the comment section? If you made it this far, just leave a comment saying, oh my God, Echo, I can't believe that happened. I confuse the people who didn't make it this far. Anyway, 1.19.50 is here. 1.19.50 is complete. We head into 1.19.60, which is probably going to span across this year and into early next year. Have a wonderful day. See you next time.